If you're an architect or interior designer and you've never used Programmer before, well, you're doing something wrong. Programmer is an absolute essential for architectural specifications. What's going on team? My name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And yes, Programmer may be the sponsor of today's video, However, I've personally been using Programmer for almost half a decade. It was something I stumbled upon when actually trying to build this exact product due to a lack of service in the industry. And today I'm gonna to teach you exactly how to use Programmer in under 15 minutes. Are you ready? Let's go. To get started with Programmer, all you have to do is go to programmer.design. That's it, no.com, no.au, just programmer.design. It's super simple. After which you wanna come up to the top and start for free or log in completely up to you. If you hit start for free, it's gonna ask you to create your account generically like everything else. Go through the steps, use Google, use Xero, whichever you prefer. Once you're in, you're gonna see something like this. This is my account created specifically for this video. I've removed all of my live projects so that I keep some confidentiality, but I've left one and just taken out the details. And we'll get to that a little bit later, but I wanna show you exactly how to use Programmer. So Programmer is ridiculously simple. On left-hand side, you're gonna have your main menu and you can use as much or as little as this as you like. So projects is the thing I use almost every other day because projects is where I update my specifications, create my project schedules and everything in between. If you're looking for an all-in-one platform, Programmer also now does time tracking specifically designed for architects, interior designers. All you have to do is go in, create some projects, and then add your times. It has a to-do list built in. It has a studio view, which is basically just boards of in progress, in review and done, and also our trade portal. The trade portal is only available in Australia and New Zealand right now, but it will be available in the United States very soon. Now, the trade portal is epic because it has almost every high-end architecture supplier, at least here in Australia, so if you're looking for something new, you can simply come in, explore the new collection, scroll down, find incredible pieces of furniture with pricing automatically here. So once you've found something you like, you can just go add to, drop it into a real project, and it will be automatically populated with all the information you need. The Procurement Hub basically allows you to organize and manage deliveries, orders, and everything in between. Purchase orders and invoices, self-explanatory, keep things organized. Now, there's no need for me to go through the address book, the image library, or the product library. These are your personal products and personal images that you add to build to your own database. But we want to get started. So let's move straight back to projects and dive in to what Programmer is really about, at least for me personally. I'll open up the live example and go into Addenda E. Now, Addenda E is the compilation of everything to date that has been selected. There's definitely more to select because you can see some blank and empty pieces, but a lot has been selected. And you'll see I've categorized it in my own personal way, from appliances to joinery, to plumbing fixtures and fittings and accessories. So once the schedule is completed, it will look something along these lines, but we're probably jumping too far ahead. So let's jump back to projects. Let's create a new project in the top right-hand corner. Let's call the project name YouTube project, and we're gonna consider it a single residential. These elements don't actually matter. They're more for categorizing it for yourself laid down track. I would personally go ahead and add in the street address, the city, the state postcode, and everything in between. So that appears on the documentation when you go ahead to export it. If you wanna select the time frame, start and stop date, that'll help you in your time tracking and your studio views if you're using those features. Programmer might be built here in Australia, but it does have currencies everywhere globally. So if you're looking to use this outside of Australia and you still want it to be in the right currency, you can go ahead and switch it in every single individual project. And you can also switch from metric to imperial. Taxes is something that we can add at any point in time in our settings, depending on your personal needs. The cover image is what you saw here. So I've uploaded a picture of the project and that becomes the cover image. The description completely up to you. The website, usually your company website or your personal website, whatever you want. And then if you wish to add team members to help you collaborate on this project, you're more than welcome to. So let's start by hitting the add button and have this project created for us. We'll see YouTube project pops up near immediately. So we click on that and we have two items pop up for us. We have the untitled schedule and the untitled pin board. I'll run through the pin board very quickly. All you have to do in the pin board is create new sections, such as exterior inspo, 
and then go ahead and add some files. You can add them from your files, from Pinterest, your library, your product library, anywhere you want. So if we go add from Pinterest, let's say your client sent you this mid-century modern house, we can select it, add it to our mood board. It will automatically import that picture and it will start collaging a few pictures together. Now, this can be a really nice way to present to your clients if you're looking to provide them with mood boards, pin boards, ideas you can add furniture lighting anything that your heart desires into the one space so it's an incredibly versatile platform that i recommend anybody use if we were to add a second picture let's go add and then a third picture once again add you'll see it begins to start collaging it if we wanted to change the orientation the space the sizing we can simply click on these elements up the top so it changes the style if we want this picture to be more pronounced, more important than this picture we can. If we wanna go ahead and crop it so they're all aligned, we can do that relatively simply. It's all very intuitive in the pin board itself. Once you're happy when you move board and you've added all of your inspirational images, doesn't matter what they are from your own personal renders, such as this image I've just added now, we can then go ahead and share this as a published element to our client dashboard. All you need to do is add in your client's email address press the add button and I'd always recommend a thumbnail image, ideally something of their project. By publishing it to the client dashboard, you get clients involved into program it early. So when they're looking at schedules later, it's all cohesive, it all makes sense to them. But let's go back to our YouTube project and our untitled schedule. Starting from scratch, there's nothing here. There's no categories, there's no products, there's absolutely nothing. If you stick around for the programmer series, at the very end, I'll be sharing with you my personal template that you can copy and paste into your projects. And then that way, you don't have to start from scratch ever again. And I'll share it completely free. But for now, I wanna teach you exactly how to use this so you know what you're doing and you're not lost. There are a couple ways to add our first product. Blank, from library, or download the web clipper. I'd strongly recommend you download this web clipper and install it as a plugin. Super simple, click on the plugin, add to Chrome, add extension, and we're done. I'll show you how to use the web clipper a little later on in this video, but for now, let's show you the manual way. Let's start by adding a blank product. We hit the blank product tab, an untitled section appears, and our first line item appears. Let's start by changing this untitled section. To do so, simply click on the text and type in whatever you'd like it to be. So let's start with external cladding. There are a number of ways we can populate this information. We can go through it manually on this section here, or we can open the details panel, which will have everything outlined for us in a pop-up window. So let's say the first product we wanna add is James Hardy oblique cladding. We find a picture of that oblique cladding, any picture you like, it doesn't really matter what you need to upload. Either save the image, take a screenshot, do whatever works for you, and then go to your downloads or drag and drop it into the first section. You can go ahead and add multiple pictures, but just be mindful that only the first picture is gonna show up. After that, we follow up with the product name, which is oblique, the product description, which is fiber cement cladding, the dot code, which is not applicable in this case, the product details, which can be anything you like. For me personally, I like to allocate it to wall type in my architecture project. So wall A, cladding. Quantity is self-explanatory, the number of items you're purchasing. In this case, it's based on linear meterage. So you might need 100, you might need 10, whatever you need. That number is gonna be used for our finances later on. Our brand is James Hardy. Our SKU, again, not applicable. Unless you're buying it direct from Bunnings, for example, then you would have a SKU. Lead time is important if there is very, very long lead times. Generally, James Hardy products are easy to come by. They're quick and you don't have to wait long. So I'll just go in stock for that. This is where programmer is absolutely critical. I always strongly recommend that every single product has a product URL so that when you export your specifications at the end of the day, the builder, the client, whoever's looking at it can click on the website URL, be automatically directed to the product you found and they can review it, buy it, do whatever they need rather than having to copy and paste into Google and waste hours of time. So that is absolutely essential, at least in my opinion. If you wanna go ahead and add the supplier's contact details, so for example, your James Hardy rep, you can go and add a new supplier in. Once you've added a new supplier, they're gonna be there forever. So you can just duplicate and use them for all the other products. The height, the depth, the width, the length, the color, etc. Again, self-explanatory. If we come into oblique, there are a couple options. There's your 200 and your 300 wide, and there's lengths as well. So let's say we're using the three meter, 300 wide panel. So we'll go depth, 14 mil, 
width 300 mil, length three meters. In James Hardy's case, there is no color to the product. It is a pre-primed, ready to paint on site. If you wanted to add a specific color in here, you can do so. So instead of going pre-primed, we can type in monument and then the finish will just be paint. Alternatively, you could add a paint color later in your schedule that's allocated to each individual wall type, referencing your architectural documentation and get a little bit more complex about it. Completely up to you. This is probably the more simplified way to do it. The material is a fiber cement sheet and the product catalog is construction and cladding. If you wanted to add some more custom specifications, you can go in and add a new spec. Otherwise, you have three sections of notes. Important notes, which show up on your schedule in red. Standard notes, which show up on your schedule in black. And then your internal notes, which aren't exported. So for instance, if you wanna make sure the builder uses the correct trim or the correct fixing detail, or needs to be cautious of some, a specific weatherproofing issue, then highlight it in red and bold so it can't be missed. Otherwise, for the general note, like or similar approved by architect, then just type it in the regular notes. Once you've populated your summary information in, you can go ahead and finish. It's all saved automatically as you type. So you don't actually have to be thinking about constantly pressing save button. The programmer has so much more available to it. So let's come back into our detail section. Up top, if we click on our finances tab, we can see the quantities are automatically pre-populated from our summary. We have our RRP price. If I jump to the Bunnings website, we'll see it's $89.11. So $89.11, if we had a hundred quantities of linear meterage, whatever the product is, however you were calculating it, it will automatically calculate the price. Now that's the recommended retail price. If you're a trade, if you're passing on builder's discounts, if you're passing on your trade discounts, then you can also put in your trade price. Let's say your trade price is $84.50 and you're getting about a 5.17% discount. You can either type in the trade price or you can change the trade discount and it will adjust accordingly. So if you're getting a much better discount, say 10%, then you can go ahead and discount it and it will automatically update that financial figure. So if we exit out of that details tab now, we'll see our summary up the top in the toggle highlighted and then our financial toggle as well. They are separated for the screen view, but they are amalgamated in the PDF option. That way you can just focus on your summary information or you can just focus on your financial information. Either way, you can jump between these tabs pretty rapidly. Last but not least, the two final tabs in our details are our attachments. So for instance, if we wanted to add our material safety data sheet, or if we wanted to include our installation guide or our warranties, we could go ahead and include that there. Last but not least is our approvals tab, which is actually easier to use in the main menu. So at the moment it's set to draft. The drop down menu provides a number of different items. So let's say you've sent this package out for client review. You hit client review, then we go back to the details and approvals. You'll see that me personally, David Tomich, on Friday the 18th of April at 4.32 p.m. has labeled this item as for client review. Now we'll let a, a minute go past and change that. Let's say it's gone out for the client, the client's rung up and gone, I love it, go for it, approve. That way we can approve our item very quickly. And all of that is tracked in our actual approvals section. That may not seem critically important to you until you start ordering items, paying for items, delivering items, installing them, all of the above. You need to know where it's at, how to run your projects, and if it's been rejected, for instance, by the client, and you need to find a new product. You might not have time to find that product immediately. You hit rejected, you come back, and you fix it later. Moving forward, the rest is exactly the same. You can add a new section so that you have external cladding then internal cladding, for example. You can add a new product from library, custom product, or you can hit these three dots and duplicate the product. So we can just duplicate this fiber cement cladding. Let's go, this needs to be on wall B. And instead of being monument, it's Dover White, for instance. You can create products very, very rapidly. Now, if you wanted to use the web clipper as an example, let's go into this Bunnings object, open up our web clipper. It automatically has the screenshot item. So drag our mouse, screenshot the product that adds it in. And then the rest is a matter of clicking. Product description, we click on the product description down here. The product name, we highlight this over here. The brand, James Hardy. It's all automatically populated by just highlighting, copying, pasting, moving forward. It makes life so much easier. Even the SKU number, we can select that, highlight it, drag it into the SKU, automatically dropped in. A material safety data sheet, we click on it, it automatically attaches it without even having to download it. And when you're done, you simply hit the clip button, tell it where you want it to go, 
for example, YouTube project, unscheduled exterior cladding, it starts clipping the information. And by the time you come back into your schedule, refresh it, that product is there ready to go. Now you've done the hard yards and your screen looks something like mine and you need to export it and hand it to your client. There's a couple ways to do that. First of all, let's focus in. Up top, we have our share button where we can literally publish to a client dashboard, provide their email so they can view this in their own dashboard. Alternatively, we can publish to the web. We simply copy that link, open up a new tab and paste it in. And this is exactly what the client will see. So we can go ahead and collapse individual sections or navigate directly to an item through the menu tab. The other alternative way is closing that section, going to the three dots and scrolling down to export as PDF or Excel document. For me personally, I like the PDF option because it gives me a bit more control. So I can go ahead and include as much information as I want or as little information as I want. So if I didn't want the client to see the pricing, the product pricing or the schedule value, I can go ahead and untick those before hitting export. Otherwise, highlight them all, press export, give it a few seconds to export and you'll get this PDF. Now, you can simply click and go direct to the website like we previously showcased or you can scroll through your PDF, go through, use it like a normal document and make sure your projects are perfect every time. Anyway, that is all for me today, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.